the first 40 minutes of the film, how come we've never seen any of that footage? It's amazing. It's a, it, look, it's the bet my partner, Glenn Evans, my producing partner, when we made the film, it was Act 3, where Sonny comes into the film, you know, when you go to the convention, I, I knew that, I, I could make that in my sleep now, because I've done a couple of movies about the Tea Party movement, so it was the first two-thirds of the movie, which was really the bet, could, you, could we hit the reset button on our introduction to the American people, and the story's been kind of told in print, there's a book called Sarah from Alaska, written by Scott Conroy, who was an in-bed reporter with CBS News, he's now at Real Clear Politics, and Shoshana Walsh, Walshy, who's a correspondent with the Daily Beast. They're not ideologues, and they're certainly not Palinistas. They wrote a book, The Sarah from Alaska, had the first part of that story was gripping, and it dovetailed with what I read in Going Rogue, which I continue to say sold five million copies, but not many people read the first part of the book. They, they, everybody skips to Governor Palin. They, skip, they cut right into the story, and where we start the third act. They cut into the story at the convention. It's the first two, it, this, the, as I told my partners when we, because I said, can we really change people's attitudes when it's so set in by the media? And I said, hey, this story, she's the most covered, she's a McLuhan-esque figure in that she's the most media-saturated, one of the most media-saturated people in the world, but nobody really knows much about her. The story's hiding in plain sight. It's, it's always been there. That fact, that empirical evidence is there. It's, it just hasn't been, been told. The key to the story, and that's why I didn't want any involvement from the Palin camp, because I had a very, um, I, had a, I had a set vision for how I wanted to do this, was really the Magnificent Seven. It was these dedicated public servants. See, Alaska in the mid-2000s is very analogous to America today, where you have a, maybe not a corrupt, but you have a compromised political class of both parties that are in bed with big business. You have this crony capitalism and this kind of compromised political class that are quite removed from the, gov from the people they govern and from the problems of the people they govern. And that's why Governor Palin was, was truly a reformer. I mean, she's always been quite anti-establishment. That story was such a powerful story that I figured if I got the right politicians and civil servants that I could actually interview and make part of the, the narrative that I'd have something dramatically very powerful. But as a conservative and as a media person, um, I mean, you know they, they sent in whole platoons of reporters to, to get the Sarah Palin story during 2008. But again, why did we never see this footage? I mean, you're saying a book was written, you know, after, the, right. after it was over. Right. How did, how did we miss all of this? I think it's a question people ought to ask. I think it's a question, I mean, Fox News among them. I mean, first off, I think, and, and remember, the compression of time is always something that comes up in Governor Palin's thing. I mean, she did something in 18 months, which is extraordinary. The other thing is in Act 3 of the movie, from the time she gets the call in Alaska from John McCain's campaign to the time the bankruptcy of Lehman Brothers, which essentially ends the campaign, you know, they go from eight points down to almost five points up to then three and a half points up. That all takes place in, in less than three weeks. People forget. I mean, that's why I put those charts up there. And people go, wow, it all happened in three weeks. From, from the... From, her being beyond an unknown, nobody ever heard of her, to one of the most well-known people in the world in the bankruptcy of Lehman Brothers, which basically was the end of that campaign, no matter what people say, the Republican Party was fired, and the Republican Party should have been fired. Anybody that brought about that debacle without any explanation deserves to be fired, right? I'm a capitalist. I believe in, you know, I, I'm a former military guy. Hey, they were on the bridge. Fire them. Um, the... Um, but I think that that's, I just think people, the McCain campaign came with this cutesy narrative of hockey mom. And the media, for a host of reasons, I think just nobody got the story. So are you the conservative Michael Moore? <laughs> no. The Michael Moore is his own. Michael Moore is a master of the craft. I'm just an apprentice. I just he want, has integrity. I, just, <laughs> I actually admire Michael Moore as a filmmaker. I think he's a great filmmaker. I don't agree with his politics, but I think he makes great films. But no, I'm not the, uh, I'm, I'm the conservative Steve Bannon.